Jigs and Bigs is proud to announce we're being supported by Old Glory Outdoors. They're a veteran-owned company that carries fishing and hunting gear. Plus, they're highly active in supporting veteran organizations and charities. Old Glory is an authorized dealer of favorite rods, FX rods, Guggen baits, X-Zone lures, Sixth Sense, and many more. There's a brick-and-mortar store located in East Brookfield, Massachusetts, but you can also order online at oldgloryoutdoors.com. They ship anywhere in the lower 48 states or order online and pick up at the store. When you order, use the promo code Jigs and Bigs, and you'll save 10% off your complete order. Plus, you'll help support the show. Make sure to check out the apparel line called OGO Gear while you're there. Old Glory Outdoors believes in the slogan, Start them Young, to keep kids away from screens and enjoying nature. They've got a full array of live bait, too. Check out oldgloryoutdoors.com and use the promo code Jigs and Bigs, save some money, and gear up now. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Jigs and Bigs. What is Jigs and Bigs? And furthermore, who the hell am I? Uh, my name is uh, Bobby Roastbeef. That's the that, that's the brand name I go under. That's like sort of my online handle and my, my professional uh, name. I'll get into all that stuff later. I am uh, a local New England-based guy out here in Western Massachusetts, and I am uh, an angling enthusiast. Uh, I am a bass fisherman. I, I love to fish uh, freshwater. Water and it's uh, it's something that uh, has been a passion of mine over the last handful of years. But in the la- specifically in the last two, it's really really kind of ramped up and just taken off. So I started this podcast because I wanted to kind of have a place where I could talk uh, with, um, well, create something really for the fishing community and uh, just kind of share you know my my own stories and also because you know I've, I'm relatively new at this in my opinion. I, I really kind of wanted to do this also so that I can learn some stuff really I mean it's in it, if there's a selfish end to this that's that's really what it gets down to is you know I'm, I'm always looking to, to communicate with other people and and I uh, I just I, I think this is a, a an, an odd but but great way for me to do so so a little bit of background about myself guys I have uh, a bra uh, 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 well, I have a lot of experience actually in, in broadcasting. That's my my formal background. Uh, I worked in television for about 20 years at a local TV station. Uh, it was a great, great, great time while I was there, but things had changed. Um, I've also uh, I've been a DJ, an event DJ for a long time since 1993 when I first started, and uh, through that I've become a, uh, a a game show host, a trivia host at lots of bars and restaurants, plus private events, corporate functions, things like that. But uh, my one of my biggest passions, at least I mean, going back now, for at least the last. Four five, six years has been bass fishing in a major, major way. And uh, like I said, this is just where I kind of wanted to put all of that uh, and, and just have some fun. You know, I, I see a lot of people uh, with, with just these killer Instagram pages and, you know, sharing great pictures or doing like YouTube has just been huge. And, you know, honestly, I've got a background in podcasting. I've been, I've hosted a couple of different short run podcasts in the past. I, I feel like I've got a knack for this kind of thing as far as being able to turn out like a quality program. So I sort of felt like if I was going to contribute anything to the fishing community, I felt like a podcast was just a great place to start. You know what I'm saying? There are some great, great podcasts out there that I'm a huge, huge fan of. And uh, I'm going to, I'm going to drop a couple of names now. Two of them that I've been listening to a whole lot have been, um, well, I guess I, I've been listening a lot to The Bite. Uh, if you're not familiar with The Bite, it's a group of guys from uh, the Northern Virginia area. And uh, I, I just kind of dove into that probably a few weeks ago. And uh, they have really nice, like, beefy, 90-minute-long podcast. They really get into it, share a lot of info, and I, I really, really dig that. I also have been listening to uh, most recently and just binged, man. Like crazy is Tackle Talk. Uh, Tackle Talk is another one that I have I've just been absolutely crazy about. You want to talk about taking something away that you can actually use in your own little fishing adventures, like real information. It's really fantastic. So 
part of the reason why I appreciate those two podcasts so much is that they're done by anglers who are a little further north. Like they deal with the changes in weather that I have to deal with here uh, in in New England. Um, maybe not necessarily to the degree, but you know it it is what it is. So I'm going to use this first episode to kind of share my story about fishing, uh, talk a little bit about my passion, where that all lies, and uh, just kind of riff for a little bit and see what uh, what comes out of all of it. Who who knows? Like I said, about five years ago, um, I kind of got into bass fishing. Now, we actually have to go and rewind way, way, way back to when I was a little kid. I was probably about six, seven years old. Uh, I went out fishing uh, that I can remember for the first time with my father. And he was a really, really big trout fisherman. He used to love going out, catching trout, and uh, you know, basically catch dinner, bring it home. And uh, I grew up eating trout. Um, it, was, it was great. It was wonderful. That style of fishing always was challenging especially as a young kid, because I would sit there at the bank with my dad and I'd cast, you know, a line in and have a bobber and a worm, or maybe if I, I was I was using a, a split shot rig and, and, and fishing on the bottom and it was just waiting and waiting and sitting and it just didn't work for me necessarily. So I didn't catch a whole lot of fish. I got a little bit older and I, I was, you know, kind of got a little bit more into some things. I had ice fished for a little bit, uh, mainly with him and, and my uh, his friends and my, my uncles. We would get together and go out and do some ice fishing and it was it was fun um it's not necessarily a big passion of mine right now i do remember when i was uh like a young teenager like 12 13 14 years old i'd get together with some friends uh one of my friends had a, had a, a house on this lake and we would go and we would fish uh for bullhead and uh, we just had a good time you know we'd catch a bunch of bullhead and just you know have some fun it was great you know and, and it was what it was put that down and i kind of had gone through the remainder of high school, probably never picked up a rod or reel uh, for, geez, I mean, all the way through college, maybe had fished once or twice at, uh, you know, like picnics or something like that. We got together, it was a a spot to fish, didn't really get too crazy into it. And then a a good friend of mine, much, much later in life, well into my 30s, a good friend of mine had... uh, shot me a message and he said, Hey, I'm, I'm going out fishing, uh, this weekend. And I had just bought a house and I, I was looking for like, uh, some kind of a hobby that was affordable. <laughs> that was, uh, just something I could kind of like get out and enjoy like the outdoors, get some fresh air, do something. And he was like, yeah, I'm going fishing. He used to fish with his father-in-law and, uh, he had, uh, he invited me to tag along. So I went out, he and I had gone, we froze our asses off and, uh, you know, it wasn't species specific. We were just kind of going out there, throwing out bait. A lot of live bait back then. And that was kind of it. Well, as you know, I kind of wanted the bug had kind of bit me then. I was like, how can I actually get relatively good at this? Like, how can I understand what the hell is actually happening other than, you know, throw Because in my mind, previously, it had always been, you know, oh, you just got to, you know, you cast a line out there where you think a fish might be and you wait. And that's what it is. You just sit there and you wait. And sometimes that's exactly what it's all about. As a matter of fact, if I go out trout fishing now, I love that kind of stuff. I will gladly set up a few rods and uh, and just watch them from a distance, maybe enjoy a, a cold beverage and, and leave it at that. Along with this newfound interest in fishing, there was all this technology that kind of helped things along. Uh, I had uh, uh, you know a smartphone in my pocket, and I also had uh, you know YouTube that I could I could check out uh, you know when I was back at the house. And I started looking at some videos and started figuring out. And I was like, why is it that bass fishing is such a big deal? I never I I was always I was always intrigued by it, but it never really registered exactly what it was. Um, and back in the day, I mean, there was. You know, now you have so many different tackle boxes that you can you can subscribe to subscription services that provide you with uh, with tackle at your disposal. And back then, Lucky Tackle Box was the first one I had ever heard of. And I said, you know, instead of just going out and buying like, oh, I need some catfishing gear and I need some trout gear and I need this and this and that was like, you know, I'm just going to pick a direction. We're just going to fish for bass. That's what we're going to do. We're going to fish for bass. And I signed up with Lucky Tackle Box and they started sending me baits. 
And I slowly started working with that to kind of learn a little bit about uh, about technique and uh, and what uh, how how this all works. Now, uh, what where this all kind of went was I started getting things that I had never fished with before, getting crankbaits and jigs and you know uh, all kinds of of of, of odd shaped hooks that I was not used to using at all. Uh, not to mention that my knot tying skills were garbage. Uh, so if that took a while, <laughs> so I started slowly working on some things bit by bit bit by bit. Uh, you know, little by little, I, I kind of got kind of lucky. I caught my first ever uh, fish on a crankbait. I remember it was a, it was an Ish Monroe. I was a river to sea. I think it was called a Big Papa. It was a square bill, just a big old square bill. And uh, I, and it was some kind of an electric shad sort of color. And uh, I remember I caught that and I was, I was throwing it on spinning gear at the time. Uh, and it was uh, just this, this two piece eagle claw combo, like a six foot foot six medium action with like a 2,000, 2,500 reel on there. Nothing, nothing crazy. It was just something I had, I had bought off of Amazon because I was like, I need a fishing rod. I need a combo. So I had, I had bought that, started using that. Didn't really know a lot about what was out there and used the technology to kind of learn a little bit more. So what ended up happening with all this was I caught my first fish on a crankbait and I was just hooked. I was like, this is is amazing. I went and I started uh, just networking with people. And, you know, the thing is with fishermen is you get you, you get one or two schools generally. You get the schools where people say, oh, you know, oh, you, you like to fish. And they will just talk and and, and pass on their information, um, you know, try and educate you a little bit, you know, and, and not only that, but just also just have a great conversation. That is definitely the school that I fit into. Then you have the other school of fishermen that I have found anyway from this community where it's like, don't ever talk about my spots. If I bring you somewhere, you can't mention it. You know, it's very, very secretive. It's like, this is, this is my little, you know, this, these are my honey holes. This is where I go. This is my technique. People, a lot of people don't, don't necessarily talk about shit like that. And I get it. I get it. I get it. But you know, that's just, that's not me. So anyway, I, I had fished for a little bit and, uh, you know, it was, it was, this is all, by the way, I should say on the bank, uh, with the exception of this one next outing, I had gone out with a friend of mine, uh, Sean Don. Dominic and uh, we had uh, worked together in high school. We had worked together at a, at a, a TV and appliance store. We worked in the storeroom, and I mean, we used to go to concerts together and stuff like that. Our paths had kind of like you know, went our own ways and we had reconnected. He had seen through a Facebook post that I was getting into bass fishing. And he said, you should come out and kayak with me. That's a whole other story. I will have Sean on and we're going to talk about the time he and I went uh, kayak fishing for the first time. We had a great time, but, uh, you know, it was just, you know, we caught a bunch of like little, um, little dinks everywhere. It was, we went to this great little lake and, uh, had just had, had an awesome, awesome time. And once I was fishing from a kayak, it was just like, yeah, I got to get off the bank. I just have to get off the bank. Now I have, I am still a bank angler. I, um, I, there, there is a boat in play, but, uh, with this whole coronavirus stuff and, uh, my business kind of being, uh, in this limbo sort of situation, that's not happening anytime soon. So it's, it's the bank for me. But anyway, I had so I'd fished for a little while, and uh, there's a, a, a where we're from. There is a, a massive reservoir that has a few sections on it where you can go out, rent a boat, and fish. And my buddy Paul and I, this is uh, this is. Uh, well, you'll hear from Paul in, as we continue down the road. Paul is going to be a, a close part of this podcast. As a matter of fact, the next episode, I'm hoping to have him on to kind of share his story. We can go back and forth and talk about uh, times we've been out together. There is a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of things we can talk about, which is great. Uh, Paul had uh, Paul and I would go and we'd rent a boat and uh, you know like a small like a twenty horse if that motor uh, small boat we'd go out and we'd just fish a little bit never had any luck there and then uh, just you know the frustration kicked in and I just was not catching anything I was basically just losing lures because my technique was horrible I'd cast anything in there a jig I'd get hung up and snap off I mean it was just and I'm like oh god you know I'm just I'm not good at this so I said you know what I took some time and I didn't fish for about two years. 
I just focused on my career. I focused on going out and uh, just building my business, my trivia company, my entertainment company, building that up and up and up and up and up. And it was things were really, really good. Well, lo and behold, my paths happened across with a guy from my job from from when when I was working at one of the venues where I host trivia. This guy, his name is Eric Dowd. Eric is uh, one hell of an angler, like significant outdoor, a real outdoorsman. I would go ahead and say, like really, he fishes for carp religiously. He fishes. I mean, he fishes for anything he can get, but he is definitely into bass fishing as well. He and I had talked about getting together sometime to go out. Never really kind of took it seriously. And then I decided I was like, you know what? Screw it. This was last May. This was last May. So he calls me up and says, hey, bud, why don't we meet at this spot? So it's a very, very high pressured lake in our area. A lot of people fish there. It's very, very well known. As a matter of fact, I had fished there a a number of times, never, ever, ever so much as had a bite. Now, I want to go over the gear that I was using at the time because I, I, I really, I had all but pretty much retired that spinning reel. And I was using um, a bait casting combo, an Abu Garcia that I had bought. I had uh, bought some used bait casting stuff and it was I wasn't even sure necessarily what I was buying. I actually still have the old lose reel, the 6'6 six, six medium fast action uh, that I bought just because I was like, I need a bait casting reel. That's what I did. So I, I was looking into stuff. I had decided, all right, well, I'm going to do this. I got myself a seven foot uh, medium heavy Abu Garcia vengeance rod, just the price was right. I, you know, felt pretty confident about it. So I bought that rod feeling like it was pretty solid for me. I, I had a Abu Garcia Black Max, a 6.3 to 1 gear ratio. Pop that on there, spooled up some fluorocarbon, and then uh, hit the water. I went with, uh, with Eric and man, <laughs> the curse was broken. I was throwing a weedless Senko and I hooked up with uh, a three and a three, yeah, at least a three pounder. Got, got a great picture, posted it, was just, and it was like, it was like, relapse. I was just back 100%. I was like, the curse is gone. I was like, I had been paying attention to some things, but didn't really exercise any of it. You know, I hadn't really gone out and put anything into practice. So I had decided that I was going to take that effort that I had sat into doing a little bit of research and watching videos and paying attention, kind of taking some notes uh, and also picking the brains of people in my circle and I applied that to actually going out and catching some fish, and, and God damn it, it worked. It really did. And from that point on, it was just game over. I realized something though at that point that I needed to uh, to I needed to get it out of my head that it was baitcaster or nothing, or it was either school that you really needed to work on the two. So I started kind of building a very small arsenal with kind of a ridiculous plan in order. So what I had done was I had I had fished a lot with that medium heavy, um, that seven foot medium heavy Abu Garcia Vengeance, and I liked it. Um, I also thought that the Black Max was a decent reel, and uh, you know, with a, with a six speed reel, you're, you kind of have, like, it's, you don't have to, you can you can burn it, and I feel like it's, it's easier to go faster than it is to go slower, in my opinion. Um, so, I, I bought another one of those combos, and what I had done was I had spooled, I had one that was spooled with fluorocarbon, I spooled the other one with 30 pound braid, just so I could throw it essentially for top water for the most part, just to throw top water stuff, but also just to have, if I needed that braid application, I could go ahead and use that. If I was going to be, you know, you know, uh, flipping a jig around or something like that, I could go to that and, and I would have another option. And uh, I also bought a spinning combo. I bought a medium, a seven foot medium spinning combo and I, I had, uh, I spooled it with fluorocarbon. Now I've changed that setup and now it is spooled a 10 pound braid and I, my, my knots have gotten much better. So now I'm a hundred percent comfortable tying on leaders and doing a lot of these things that that a handful of years ago, I mean, two years ago, I would have never, ever, ever expected that I would have the confidence in my knot tying ability, in my, you know, um, ability to find structure, and my ability to kind of break down what fish are doing. And by all means, I am not an expert in any of this stuff at all. But I do have a small amount of confidence. And this is coming from somebody who had zero confidence in what they were doing. Like I would cast a line and just hope (laughs) that was it. But now I've got a little bit more insight as to what I'm doing. And I can kind of break things down a little bit. Sometimes, you know, like it's, it's fishing. We all get skunked sometimes. But now it's just part of the adventure, which is odd. So 
I had this small little arsenal of of of, of combos that I was using. I had uh, been purchasing uh, the tackle that I was comfortable with, and something changed in the way that I fish last just last year. It was uh, it was it was in late June. Um, I had been out, and one lure I had never ever had real confidence in was a bass jig like fishing a jig uh, of any kind a swim jig a casting jig a flipping jig all that stuff it nothing never ever ever really landed with me so it was about june and i decided that you know I hear so much about how jigs perform, and I, I had known and I had seen some of the results and, 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 and some of the, the, the outcome of, of, of what fishing with a jig was like. I started to just dedicate short periods of time every time I would go out. If the fish weren't biting, I would just throw a jig for the next 30 or 40 minutes. And, you know, most of the time I would end up switching back, but I would make sure to put the time in. And, uh, and that's that what happened last year was the jig was just my fire lure the entire time. My fire bait to throw was a jig, either a black and blue or a green pumpkin. The brand, it didn't matter. Usually a three eighths, occasionally a smaller quarter ounce, like finesse jig, um, that I would throw on my spinning combo. But I, I've got a lot more confidence in that. And I realize that that's a great learning platform. So from that, I had fished throughout the rest of that summer and I had experimented with a few other things. I had gotten into fishing with paddle tail swim baits. I'd never done that before. Uh, uh, had some success with that, still working on it, still working on the technique mainly. And then also I had fished with um, with a Ned Rig for the first time, tying on a Ned Rig, and I would just use a, an old beat-up Senko. I would save them and just cut them into pieces, and I would just put them on a, on a standard jig head without buying anything crazy, and I had amazing success, especially going into the fall. And then this year, starting in the spring, I started to up my Ned Rig game, and uh, and it's it's been it, it has been high, hands down right now this this spring the the highest performing bait that I have thrown yet, and it's just one of those things where you just gotta get in there and you just gotta grind. You just you know you gotta set goals, and it's worked. It's for me, it has worked unbelievably. So. It's one of these things where you know now fishing. I think it was probably um, it was probably sometime in July. I started fishing like four days a week. I would go out and I would fish for an hour or two, probably four times a week. Usually one of those days would be on the weekend. I'd go out for about four or five hours. Usually with my buddy Paul, we'd fish for a little bit, you know. And and it was it was amazing. And I started to realize that. This really just brought me a, an amazing amount of joy. Ultimately, is that's that's really kind of what it all kind of created for me was this huge amount of joy, and it it was it just felt amazing. So I decided now, like if I'm going to up this game, uh, and I'm going to start, you know, making uh, bringing bass fishing into more into my life, uh, instead of trying to cross things over and just kind of include it with everything that I do, I'm going to give it its own platform, and that's what this podcast is all about. One of my biggest gripes. When it comes to podcasts is I'm always looking for great fishing content, but I can never find something that either had enough of my, uh, of, of what I was looking for, people that I could relate to that have to fish sort of the environment that I'm in, uh, where we actually have four seasons that work this way. Like we won't see the actual spawn until May where I am. Realistically, we won't see the actual spawn until May. I, I hate to even say that it's in pre-spawn right now. It probably won't be pre-spawn for another two, two to three weeks. The water temps are slowly getting up there, but I mean, it's, it's, it is, it's still hard. You, 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 you catch a fish, that fish is ice cold still. Um, that's how it is in New England. It's just the way that it works. And on top of that, we start to transition to that fall transition much earlier, and it's much more severe for us. So it's uh, it's one of those things where I have a real hard time finding content for this area that I really, really enjoy. And I'm looking to, to network with other, other uh, fishing content creators from New England, from the north, uh, but, but definitely with a focus in New England. Uh, there's, there's some YouTube channels where I'm reaching out and speaking with uh, the, or, the creators on, the, on, on the, those, those channels. So 
that we can put some some stuff together, work together, talk, and just uh, kind of create some stuff here. Um, this podcast is totally meant for you to just. Uh, you know, it, it, it listen to it on the go, you know, or or in bits and pieces, you know, listen to what, what you can, come back to it, it'll be here. And I'm a big believer in not setting a firm platform per se. Like it's going to have some rough edges where, you know, I'm going to have certain sort of flow to it. But if the show is worth an hour, two hours, three hours, I'm going to let it go as long as it's going to have to go. If the show can get what it's done, what it needs to get done in 20 to 30 minutes, then that will work as well. Anyway, guys, so I I am crazy about fishing. I I hope you you guys enjoy this show. Um, I'm in the process of putting some social media together. I just put together a Facebook page for jigs and bigs as well as an Instagram page. Uh, Check me out and follow on there. Uh, I am doing all of this stuff right now via Zoom. I am recording this stuff currently in my office, but I'm recording all the segments through Zoom with anybody out out, out of uh, who's not necessarily local, or actually even if they are local, and here's why. The reason why I'm doing that is because currently we are in a state of emergency in uh, in, in Massachusetts and most parts of the, co- of the country because of the coronavirus, the COVID-19 pandemic has a lot of people social distancing is part of the reason why I'm unable to work at this moment. So I've been fishing daily uh, as much as I can. Uh, some of my favorite bodies of water I can't get to right now because they've been locked down because of this. Uh, so I'm I'm just making do with what I've got, you know, and we'll, we'll make all that happen. But uh, yeah, so that's what's going on there. So if you would like to get in touch with me, I'm going to give you my email address right here. You just shoot me an email, rob at xzi.com. Shoot me an email at rob at xzi.com. And uh, I'm going to set up a uh, an email for Jigs and Bigs on its own. So that way you guys can just reach out there. But shoot me an email there. I would love to talk with you guys. I, things I want to know about, I want to know, obviously, if you've got if you've got anything to share, to give to the to fishing community, whether it's technique or it's, or it's anything. But primarily what I'm really looking forward to is stories. I want to hear about the epic catch. I want to hear about like when the bug hit. When was that catch that made you feel like this was it for you? Like what was that like? What was that fish that was like an out of body experience? You know, I'm going to take and I'm going to share my own version of that story in another episode. It's a doozy. It's one of those things where there were no pictures unfortunately. Uh but it is uh it it something else happened in that instance uh, that that made it something that I will remember for the rest of my life 100% uh, anyway guys I, I hope you dig this I hope uh, I hope that uh, I can create some great stuff for uh, for for future episodes I will be having my my buddy Paul I will have Eric on here as well as well as Sean and I've got a bunch of other people that I've been in touch with uh, big shout out to everybody at the Massachusetts at the mass uh, bass fishing uh, Facebook group uh, I made a post there last night and the feedback has been amazing i've got four or five people that have reached out to me about popping in here um and uh and sharing their stories which is awesome but uh, also a bunch of people that mentioned that they would love to just listen to something like this uh, you know on their way to work or, or or when they're doing stuff around the house instead of just you know running a youtube video in the background and not being able to actually watch it so this could actually work out pretty well for everybody anyway guys uh thanks so much thanks for checking out jigs and bigs i am uh, bobby roast beef and i will see you guys in the next episode.